American Plumber Story's first season has been an amazing run. And I can tell you, initially, all we wanted to do was bring highlight to these plumbers, but it has turned into a giant movement. Some days I'm working before the sun kisses the sky. I watch the world wake up from the seat of my truck. I'm out here earning my piece of the pie. A good, honest buck. No, it ain't love. I was taught to do the things I do so I don't depend on anyone. I work hard enough through the year so I play whenever I want. I have more than I deserve, including a wife who says I'm hot. Yeah, it's better than a good life that I got. It was interesting. Out on the road when I would do a show or a concert, I'd have someone come up to me. Almost every show now, I have someone come up and say, hey, I seen uh, your plumber show on uh, YouTube. <laughs> Sadly, I have to tell them real quick, I'm not a plumber. I'm just the guy that gets to be involved with all the plumbers. And uh, it's, it's just been really neat to see how much attention that this show has brought to this trade. It's an industry that needs talented people. And I think what Fister is doing here for the industry is fantastic. You know, of the three things that's most important for American Plumber Stories, which is inspire, educate, entertain, the education is where we're going to focus on. That is the most important part where we've got to get the younger generation involved in the trade. Season one was an education for us at Fister. We realized how important the education is to build the next generation of the trade. So we're going to do that in season two. We're going to look at ways plumbers across the country or teachers are educating the next generation. They want to be a part of this. They're asking, how can they help? What can they do? We're going to embrace that and we're going to showcase that and we're going to keep expanding this movement so that we can continue to grow American Plumber Stories and continue this movement. After I started to watch the videos on my own, it became clear that the mission of American Plumber Stories and the mission of our programs were well aligned. So we started to watch them in class to really expose our students to what opportunities are out there. I, I think what you guys offer with this show is critical to not only sharing with the broader community the fabric of what our country offers, but vocations and understanding what plumbing offers as a part of that vocational aspect is critical, not only for students as they start to format their future in their brain, but also for everyone to re really recognize how various members of our community contribute and the contributions that they bring. Our responsibility as educators is to serve the whole community, not just a piece of the community. You know, you have students and families who are really interested in high level secondary education, and that's great, and that leads to really prosperous, fulfilling careers. But there's vocational opportunities, there are trade opportunities, there's military opportunities, and a variety of students are interested in all of those things. And so our responsibility, if we're really going to serve the entire community, is to make sure that we offer programs programs that do just that. The hands-on aspect of learning is gone. I think we need to bring that back. I really think that we need to get the building trades back into the schools. Like we, back in the day, I used to go to shop class. We need to get back to that. The stereotype what the average person think what a plumber is, is overweight, plumber's crack, messes up your house, doesn't follow direction, and when you leave, you still have a leak and over and is gonna charge a lot of money. I'm the complete opposite stereotype. I get a lot of people on Instagram that DMs me like, man, you don't look like a plumber at all. And I'm just like, okay, what does a plumber look like? And then they explain it to me. I said, man, a plumber could be anyone. It could be a male, it could be a female, it could be anyone, young or old. A good friend, son went to college, paid over $400,000 in tuition, and got out and was offered a $17 an hour job. Do the math. People who have lost their jobs during the pandemic, if you were managers and you have the ability to problem solve, then plumbing is for you. I owe everything to the plumbing industry to give back, to show these youngsters that are up and coming that there's more to life than running in the streets or, you know, drinking every weekend. So I credit plumbing to taking me out of poverty. I credit plumbing to taking me out of these streets. And I credit plumbing to saving my life. We all know that there's a shortage in trades and we know that there's a shortage in plumbers. But what I didn't know and what I've learned 
in doing this show is the desire for those people that are plumbers. This ain't like a lot of businesses where you don't really want a lot of competition. These people want people out there doing what they're doing because they have a passion for it. And the biggest thing that we're lacking in our country is the education, the ability for someone to go to a school to learn the plumbing trade. And that's what the show's all about. We've even had politicians reach out to us, maybe looking at changing the way they educate the students. How can they do more classroom curriculum? How can they change it to steer them into the trade? I personally want to say thank you to everybody that's been watching the show that's become a part of this movement, especially the plumbers. Thank you all so much for what you're doing. But I also want to thank the people who aren't plumbers who've been watching the show uh, and tell you this. I, I've said this all along, and I'll, and I'll continue to say this. I've always wanted my children to have an education, but I also wanted them to have an education in an area that they would enjoy. And you don't have to be lawyers and doctors to make a lot of money. And we've shown people in the plumbing trade that have proven that. So continue your education. But parents, if you got kids that want to be plumbers, instead of forcing them to go to college, you might uh, encourage them to go to a trade school or get involved in a place where they can get that education in a trade where they're going to make a lot of money. And they ain't going to have a uh, lot of school loans paid back neither. <laughs> Season two, you're gonna see a lot of what we've seen in season one. We're gonna to continue to highlight plumbers and talk to them. But one thing, like I said, that we learned in the past in season one, we learned that a lot of these guys are doing this and are excited about being a part of the American Plumber Stories because they know that this is a platform that highlights the necessity for plumbers education. So our objective in season two is to continue that. We wanna to continue to grow the potential and the possibility for us to help and assist in the creation of the education of plumbers. Mr. has partnered with the National Housing Endowment to support the Skilled Labor Fund. You can go to AmericanPlumberStories.com to learn how you can apply for scholarships and help support the fund.